Well, well, the idea here really was to try to get the global conversation started about some of the risks that AI presents and perhaps come to some sort of agreement about what the leaders of the world are going to do about it. And to that end, as you mentioned, the US and the UK have both announced their own AI safety institutes to look at some of these AI models. There was the Bletchley Park declaration signed between 28 countries. Now, nothing concrete in that in terms of rules or regulation, but it was a general feeling that, look, there are risks associated with AI and we probably should do something about that. And that's really what the leaders are going to be discussing over the coming months and years, of course, as well. Now, one of the interesting things about that, you spoke about divergence, was that China signed that agreement as well. And there was a lot of contention, a lot of controversy when the UK announced that it was inviting China and that China would attend, given a, a couple of things. One, of course, the increasing tension uh, geopolitically between the UK and China, as well as the US and China, but also that tensions on the technology front around technologies like AI, like semiconductors as well. And China's vice minister of science and technology was here speaking yesterday and said, look, we will uh, look at the global consensus and we want to to be part of that. His name is Wu Jiaohui. He was speaking yesterday. Let's just listen in to what he had to say. China is willing to enhance dialogue and communication in AI safety with all sides, contributing to an international mechanism with broad participation and governance framework based on wide consensus, delivering benefits to the people and building a community with a shared future for mankind. So, so China's view here really is that it's willing to engage on these issues around AI with the global community as well. But of course, at the same time, it's pushing ahead with its own development of the technology. It's got some of the largest tech players in the world. It sees AI as a frontier technology and something that it needs to compete with the US on as well. And China already has some of its own laws uh, around AI, some of the first in the world at that point as well domestically. And many, of course, focus around what are the tight internet controls that exist in China already as well. So to that end, I asked Michelle Donnellan, who's the Secretary of State for Science and Technology here in the UK, whether she believes China can be a part of this global consensus as, as they push towards that on AI. Let's just listen in. It is uh, massive, the fact that China had attended this summit in the first place. And we do, as the Prime Minister said last week, at least have to try to engage them in this conversation. To me, I always compare it to climate change. You know, if we all act individually and in isolation and not in a coordinated and collective fashion, we won't have the desired impact. And AI is exactly the same. It doesn't respect geographical boundaries. And as you all have seen from uh, the Minister's responses today, they too are engaged in this debate. They too recognise the risks and they too want to work on some of the, the mitigations. So the UK hopeful that China will be on board, of course, and as these, the, the, the big debate really is as these standards uh, do emerge around AI and the development of, of that, do we get a world in which there is a US, UK, Europe-led set of standards and rules and a China-led set of standards and rules? And that's the big question, the big unknown going forward as the world grapples with this rapidly emerging technology, guys. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.